Hi there, it's Bike Tour Mike here, and today we're going to talk about how to choose a tent for your next bike tour. I'm going to go through the features you should be looking for and also what to avoid. To get us started, let's take a look at two different kinds of tent that I own. So this is a freestanding tent, while this is a non-freestanding tunnel tent. And there are benefits and drawbacks with each of these types, and I thought I would go through those features. So if you start with a non-standing tunnel tent first, I mainly use this tent when I'm camping, when I know it's going to be either cold or raining. This is a lot easier to set up in the rain, and it uh, keeps me warm when it's a bit cold outside. However, there are a couple of drawbacks to this tent. It takes a lot more effort to pitch. It takes probably twice as much time as the one I have over here to pitch. And as you can see, you have a lot more headspace in this freestanding tent than in the tunnel tent. It also takes up a lot more space both in your pannier and on the ground. And why is this a thing to consider, you might ask? Uh, well, if say if you're out in the woods wild camping and you find a piece of sort of flat ground, then it's nice to have sort of a small tent because finding a big flat spot in the woods is always difficult, believe me. <laughs> Another drawback of this tunnel tent is that the ventilation in this type of tent isn't that good as in the freestanding tent. We have a ventilation window over here, but that's pretty much it. And that means that in the morning, you're probably gonna wake up with a lot of condensation inside of the outer tent wall. So what is a freestanding tent, you might ask? Well, it means that you can put it down on almost any surface. You don't have to have grass as I do in this type of situation. You can pitch your tent on concrete or inside of a garage or whatever you choose. And it also means that once you have pitched the tent, you can just lift it up and uh, move it around until you find a nice flat spot. But you still have the possibility to stake it down if it's going to be windy in the night. So you have the best of both worlds here with a freestanding tent. And as you can see, you have a lot more headroom with this type of tent. It's also a lot quicker to pitch. It took me just about five minutes to do this, while it took me around 10 minutes to pitch the blue tunnel tent over here. And as you can see here, most of the inner tent consists of this mesh fabric, which means you have a nice airflow through the tent. And that means that you don't have as much condensation in the morning as you do with the tunnel tent. And you can also skip the rain fly altogether. If you know it's going to be a pretty warm and clear night without any rain, you can just remove the rain fly and just have the inner tent set up. The only drawbacks that I can think of with this tent is that it's a bit trickier to pitch in the rain without everything getting wet. And it's also not so good when it's really cold outside. Uh, since you have this nice airflow going through it. It's going to be much colder to sleep in this one than in the tunnel tent. There are two types of tents, either with uh, a single wall or a double wall. And both of these tents are double wall tents. And I really think you should go for a double wall tent. Most of them are, anyways. <laughs> Uh, both because the airflow through the tent is a lot better and you get a lot less condensation. If you have a single wall tent and you have your sleeping bag up against the wall, it's probably going to be damp in the morning because all of the condensation will run on the inside of the single wall inner tent. Another thing you might want to think about is getting a tent with a side door instead of a door by the head end, as I do in both of my tents. I wish I'd known this before I bought either one of these, because uh, me being a pretty big person makes uh, getting into the tent a bit tricky. I can show you. Usually means that I have to sort of back into the tent, take off my shoes, turn around <laughs> before I'm in. 
And while I'm down here on the ground, I can also talk about another important feature of a tent, and that is the vestibule. That's the area before you get into the inner tent, where you can usually store your shoes or helmet or water balls or panniers if you choose to do that. It's really nice to have a bit of storage outside your tent, especially if you have a one-man tent, then it's going to be pretty cramped in there. So you want to look for a tent that has a decent size vestibule. And while we're on the subject of a one-man tent, neither one of my two tents are actually a one-man tent. Both of these are two-man tents. And the difference between a one-man tent and a two-man tent in this series is about 15 centimeters or 6 inches in width. So I went for the two-man tent, so I'm able to store all of my panniers inside. I have plenty of space if it's a rainy day to move around inside of the tent. And I can also charge my electronics in there without everything lying on top of my sleeping bag. I sacrificed a couple of extra grams and a bit of space to have more comfort when I'm off the bike. And a two-person tent is usually a one-person tent plus a little bit of extra space. When I go on bike tours with my wife, I usually take the blue one. We can fit two of us in there pretty comfortably, but in this tent it would be too cramped. So I do a lot of wild camping, and here in Sweden we have this thing called Allemansrätten, or every man's right to roam, which kind of means that you're able to pitch your tent anywhere you like, just as long as you're at least 100 meters away from the nearest house. And that's why I'm able to get away with having a blue and a grey tent. <laughs> I don't need to be that stealthy when I'm doing my wild camping. But if you're doing some stealth camping in an area where you're not allowed to camp, I would recommend to buy a tent that's more camouflaged than these two. Maybe a green or a brown color that would make the tent melt more into the surrounding nature. Another nice feature of a bike touring tent is to look for those that have this kind of bathtub floor. So you can see in this tent that you have around 15 centimeters or 6 inches, which means that even if you're camping in a stream of water, it uh, takes a lot of water before it goes over this what they call bathtub floor. And the water just runs underneath the tent instead. And believe me, I've experienced this a couple of times. On my last trip to Provence, I had a creek that basically flowed just underneath my tent. And thanks to this bathtub floor, it went underneath the tent instead of inside my tent. <laughs> Next feature we should look at is a really important one, and that is a footprint or a ground sheet. A lot of the more expensive tents out there come with a footprint. Often you have to buy it extra as an additional charge above the cost for the tent. But uh, you can also do as I've done with my blue tunnel tent over here. I've just made my own footprint out of a tarp, and you can also use some sort of painter's plastic. So what you do is you just uh, lay out your tent on the floor and then you cut the piece of plastic to fit the underside of your tent. And what does the footprint do for your tent? Well the first thing it does is that it makes sure that the condensation from the ground stays between the ground and the footprint instead of going on the underside of your tent and everything gets moist inside of the tent. So another good thing about the footprint is that it protects the underside of your tent from sticks, stones and cones. So it keeps your uh, underside nice and clean and it also protects it from getting holes from sticks and pine cones and so on. And that is also good for your sleeping pad so you don't wake up in the middle of the night with a puncture in your sleeping pad. Another thing to look for is a YKK zipper. These are high quality zippers that make sure that the zipper don't snag or get caught in the tent fabric. 
If you're planning on camping in an area where it's really windy, you should look for a tent that has mounts for guidelines. So you can first take out your tent and then cinch it down using all these mounts so it's really stable when it starts to get windy during the night. Well, I hope you got some useful tips out of watching the video and good luck on finding a tent for your next bike tour. If you want to watch a review of the tent I have behind me, the Nature Hike Cloud Up 2, you can just click the link up in the corner. Otherwise, until next time, have a good one.